rugged mountain country a few miles north of this busy winding highway, a $10 million pipeline has been completed. This line carries natural gas from the Tennessee Gas Transmission Company's main line in Middle Tennessee to the city of Oak Ridge. Because of the atomic bomb plant, Oak Ridge in a few short years has grown from a small mountain community to become the fifth largest city of Tennessee. For a distance of 172 miles across muddy fields and up and down steep slopes, the pipeline cuts through the forests and rock of the heavily wooded Cumberland Mountains. Powerful bulldozers cleared the right of way through the forests, and the traction ditchers went to work digging the trench to the full depth when possible or down to the underlying rock. The 22-inch pipe requires a trench three feet wide with a minimum depth of four and a half feet to provide a 30-inch cover of protective backfill over the pipe. The conveyor belt piles the dirt in a neat ridge ready for the bulldozers to backfill the trench after the pipe is laid. Excavating a trench through dirt is done with comparative ease. The real work begins when rock appears in the trench, for rock must be drilled and blasted, and these Tennessee hills are full of rock. The contractor was working against a time limit. The problem of putting the trench through the limestone, dolomite, and sandstone of these Cumberland Mountains had to be met with the most powerful of modern drilling equipment. The steady trend of all construction machinery is toward larger machines of greater capacity to accomplish more work faster. In keeping with this trend, the Gardner Denver model RMT-99 twin drill was developed for pipeline drilling. The twin drill is rapidly replacing the light handheld drills the jackhammers formerly used. One of these twin drills will equal the daily footage drilled by eight of the lighter handheld drills. And the drillers are relieved of the arduous task of carrying drills and steel and air hoses from hole to hole. The tractor carries the twin drill with ease and tows the compressor as well. Together they make a complete drilling unit, highly mobile. While highways wind through the mountains to minimize the grades, Pipelines go straight across country as the crow flies. The trench must be excavated through dirt, sand and rock on level ground and up and down steep mountain slopes. Each set of twin drills receives its air supply from a Gardner Denver 500 cubic foot air compressor. These portable compressors are water-cooled and powered by the well-known Caterpillar D13000 diesel engine. Drilling pressure is maintained between 80 and 90 pounds per square inch. This pressure varies depending upon the amount of blowing air used to clean the cuttings from the hole while drilling. The Cumberland sandstone formation is highly abrasive silica sand rock so abrasive that it's mined and crushed for use as a cutting medium in the gang saws of the marble mills of Knoxville, a few miles away. Oil bath cleaners are used on both engine and compressor to remove the dust of the nearby drills from the intake air. But the dust condition here is extreme, and the air cleaners require careful attention. This contractor keeps extra cleaners on hand, and a jeep tours the line with them. Each dirty cleaner is exchanged frequently 
for one which has been cleaned and filled with fresh oil. This kind of care pays dividends by maintaining the efficiency of the equipment. The twin drill is equipped with an automatic blow valve. A twist of the drill throttle stops the hammer and sends a blast of cleaning air at line pressure through the steel to the bottom of the hole. A helper follows along behind the drills and plugs the completed holes with leafy brush to mark them and to keep them clean for the powder men. The automatic blowing, an exclusive feature of this drill, makes hole cleaning so easy that the drillers blow their holes more frequently and frequent blowing avoids the troubles, delays, and high cost of stuck steels and lost holes. First, to lift the drills until the steel and bits are in the clear. The tractor and compressor then move up about three feet for correct spacing of the holes. The drills are lowered, the operators steady them momentarily to spot the next holes, and they start drilling again. To come out of the finished holes and move to the next set of holes requires less than one minute. The drilling is almost continuous, and the outfit moves steadily along. Holes are drilled on each side of the trench in a staggered pattern and bottomed between five and six feet below the ground level. Where the rock does not come to the surface, the long steel reaches down to the rock. The operators stand on the ground level and control the drills from there. The feeds of the twin drill are long enough to drill six feet deep without stopping. Holes are started and drilled to the bottom with no change of steel or bit. Rock bits are of the four-point side hole type, which do not plug in soft ground or when going through mud seams. One and seven-eighths inch bits are used for most of the drilling on this job. In very seamy ground, it was found advantageous to use two-inch rock bits. Hauled by powerful diesel tractors, these drills and compressors are moved up and down steep slopes and through heavy mud and sand. The fall rains make the right-of-way a treacherous bog of mud, but the work has to be carried on continuously. The contract must be completed regardless of obstacles. The slippery surface after a rain makes the going hazardous when moving equipment to a new location. The frames, drawbars, and running gear of these eight-ton compressors must be built to withstand this kind of service. Breakdowns are too costly on pipeline work. The sure-footed bulldozers are called upon frequently to help the supply trucks through the heavy going. Fuel supply must be maintained.
Many hours are saved in moving because these self-contained drilling units are ready to go to work immediately upon arriving at a new location. Two spreads of equipment are used. Each spread includes several groups of three twin drills. As these groups move along, the first machines drill about one-third of the required holes. The second unit drills half of the remainder. The third finishes up the job. This system simplifies the supervision and concentrates the blasting at the end of the day to fewer locations, one for each group of drills. There are times when even the tractors as well as the compressors become mud-bound. When this happens, a second tractor on more solid ground pulls them through with a winch. The rock is very seamy. Solid rock formations, which are easier to drill, were seldom found. The crews worked a single shift of 14 hours through the long summer days. This was reduced to 12, then to 10 hours as the days became shorter. The twin drill hangs from the side boom on a ball bearing swivel eye, so the alignment is not affected by the twist of the cable. Pipeline contractors are specialists in overcoming the obstacles of thick forests, heavy underbrush, mud, steep hillsides and streams. The trench was doubled in depth where it crossed small mountain streams as insurance against washouts during floods. Down the steep hill, a twin drill with its tractor and compressor moved to a new location. The powder men follow closely behind the drillers. 40% gelatin dynamite in one and a quarter and one and a half inch sticks is used throughout the job. In the low rain filled sections of the trench, electric detonators were used for blasting. The heavier rock cuts were also shot with electric detonators. Small stream crossings were shot with primacord. Most of the holes, however, were blasted with cap and fuse. Moving swiftly from one hole to the next, the powder men light each fuse. Having lighted the fuses, the powder men retreat to a safe distance to watch the results of their work. The smoke of the lighted fuses casts a cloud over the scene. And then, the blast.
Like a creeping barrage, the succession of blasts comes closer and closer, shaking the earth and breaking the trench to the required grade. Much of this sandstone, pulverized by the blast, has become sand again. Under the shattered rock, the trench is ready for the cleanup gang to clear away the broken material before the stringing crew arrives with the pipe. At this point, it's apparent that the heavy loading of the holes has paid off. The rock is well broken. Hand shovelers with their Wyoming number twos follow the clamshells and backhoes to put the finishing touches on the trench bottom and prepare it to receive the pipe. The occasional high spot of rock in the bottom of the trench is drilled out with Gardner Denver 55 pound handheld drills. Meanwhile, the heavy pipe has been strung along the edge of the trench. The already beveled ends of each length are tack welded. The finish welders will come along later to lay a full bead in each joint. Welding a pipeline is a job for experts. Every weld must be perfect. This completed line was tested at a pressure of 720 pounds per square inch. In actual service, it will deliver gas at 200 pounds pressure to its eastern terminus, Oak Ridge. Pipelines are costly. They must return the owner's investment by giving uninterrupted service for many years while lying buried in damp ground. Complete protection against corrosion and electrolytic damage is of prime importance. A tractor with side boom raises the long string of welded pipe in a rolling cradle while towing the complicated machine which cleans the pipe with wire brushes and applies its first protective coating. A whirling band of heavy fabric spreads the coating evenly over the surface as the tractor and doping machine move along. After this first coat, the pipe is shored up on timbers to await the wrapping machine. Following the doper comes the wrapping machine, another ingenious piece of special pipeline equipment. Two overlapping spiral wrappings of an impregnated padding are applied simultaneously while a hot mix of protective dope is sprayed continuously under and between the layers. More than 75% of the trench for this 172 mile line had to be cut through rock. 
Connections for local distributing lines are made after the wrapping machine passes by. The completed line will deliver 60 million cubic feet of natural gas daily to the Atomic Energy Commission's Oak Ridge plant. It will supply also the industrial and domestic needs of the many smaller communities along its route through the hills of Middle Tennessee. The Omen Fulton Brody Group contracted to complete this 172 mile line in 165 working days, more than a mile every day. Only the resourcefulness of the experienced contractor and his men, with the aid of dependable machines designed or adapted to the special needs of the pipeliner, make possible this kind of progress. <laughs> 